Okay, everybody, I got a question for you. What experience do you have looking in the mirror? And then what I'm talking about looking in the mirror is really looking at yourself and looking into your eyes and going, what do I see? What experience comes up for you? Do you like what you see? And I'm not talking about visually. I'm talking about just staring into your soul going, I know that person and I like that person or I don't like that person. So we're going to have a conversation about that. Today. Welcome to Beyond the Facade podcast. I'm your host, Luke Gordon, and I'm thrilled to have you join me in this space today. What we're gonna be doing is diving deep into the trials and triumphs and truths of seeking authenticity. Becoming your true self isn't about a single action or a moment, it's a relentless pursuit, a commitment to self that reveals the rich connection and meaning that our life has to offer. So whether this is your first time tuning in or you're a regular listener, know this, what you're building here goes beyond a conversation. You're here to challenge, to change, and to celebrate the incredible journey of becoming your authentic self. Because when you dare to show up fully, the rewards are immeasurable. So welcome to Beyond the Facade. Let's get started. I probably say this every time, really excited about this subject, but I'm more excited about our guest today than I am our subject, but they kind of go hand in hand. So my guest today is somebody I've been around in the journey for a while now had a chance. We've been around each other. I've seen him go through the journey and it has everything to do with how I set this podcast up with the question that I asked you. So he's somebody that has walked the path. If you talk about pay your dues, show up, go through the hard, stare yourself in the mirror, analyze what you see, feel what you see, all that stuff and much respect to him. So I'm excited to pull him into this conversation today. So I could share with you a bunch of things about him. Do you have anything you want to say for yourself about you? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Thanks, Luke. I guess the thing I want to say the most is when I first got asked about doing this, I'm like, why me? Why would anybody care what I have to say? And then I also thought, why not me? You know, all, all I have is my experience, my journey, and my story. And that's all any of us has. And so I think for me today, this is more than anything about another chance for me to let go of the outcome and just share my experience and then let go and see what happens. So. That's it. I'm glad to be here today. When I asked you, I'm like, I got a 50, 50 chance, whether he's going to say I'll do this or not. I was super glad you accepted that. Here's what I asked you before we jump to this podcast, which is what message do you want people to know? So I'm going to open this podcast with what you want people to know. And then if you could please close the podcast at the very end and you say it again, because I'd like it to hear from both sides. So this is what you said. You said. What I want people to know, and remember everybody listening, this is a person who's walked the journey, like has literally put in the time, put in their dues, just like me, broken still, but also working really, really hard. And what you said was, is you matter, you have value, nothing you've done or will do or anyone else says or thinks of you changes that you are enough. Why was that such an important message? Why that one? I think when the question was asked, it was like, it's something I want people who maybe weren't as far along in the journey as I am is. And honestly, it's still relevant for me today. I think for me, like this entire journey is, it's a journey of, be, of learning to be enough. Part of the behaviors and stuff that, that I engage in or we engage in is about external validation or, or getting things from other people and learning how to be okay with who I am and seeing my own value and being enough is, has been the entire journey. <laughs> And in, in some ways, so I think for me, that's what I would have wanted to hear going through the journey and that's what I think other people would need to hear as well. Okay. Let's define a little bit of what your message was. You said nothing you've done or ever will do or what other people say changes that you have value. So let's use this word that drives me crazy, which is worth. And I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on this. I believe that worth and value have a different meaning. My meaning has a different meaning than what other people in the world might say. So let me just, words matter. Okay. So we're going to talk about my meaning. I'd like to hear your meaning. And then all of you listening are going to have meanings, but the words are worth and value. Let's start off this conversation by going, okay, what is worth? What is value as a human? Do I have worth? Do I have value? And the world might say, okay, I don't know how much money you got. Like, what's your social status? What's your job? What do you drive? Oh, who's your partner? And they start asking these questions around to determine value, right? And 
that's what commonplace for what people say of worth and value. But when I'm looking in the mirror, I'm telling you, I'm measuring it. By the way, in my journey, in my journey, I didn't want to look in the mirror. Did not want to look in the mirror. I'm telling you, making eye contact with myself. I could do my hair. I could brush my teeth. I could do that stuff in the mirror. But look at myself in the eyes. That was something that I did not want to spend time doing. I don't know. I've never asked you about this. What, what's the mirror experience like for you? Yeah, similar. I think I was like, I can get ready in the morning, but like looking myself like in the eyes and just looking and, and seeing you know, what, what comes back has been, you know, incredibly difficult. I think not always liking what I see, but also not really understanding how to really define what I see either in, in any real term. Okay. So if we give this value or worth conversation, let's talk about a child. I'd like to attempt to prove a point. So the question I have for you is, is do you believe that a 12 month old has value or, or worth? Absolutely. Yeah. Like you're, you don't hesitate like in saying that? No. Okay. I'm going to be facetious. I'm going to push back. That's crazy. Okay. Cause what we're talking about earlier, like what, think about that, that child, that 12 month old, they are just work. I'm going to sound like a jerk saying this. I recognize this. A picture we're going like, who is this guy talking about children this way? Okay. But that, that 12 month old, they don't hold value or worth in the sense of like, they're just work. If you've been around a 12 month old, it's not like they do anything for you. It's not like they give you something. It's not like there's a benefit to that. So I'm pushing back on that. What do you have to say? I think there's lots of things. I think they provide some hope and joy and, and love and, and connection, but also the, the potential that they have when you look at, at a child, they, they haven't had any uh, life experiences yet. They could be literally be anybody. So I think when you're looking at them, you're looking at, they have the entire, in some ways, their entire lives ahead of them and they can be literally anybody. And so you're kind of judging their value in some ways on what they could become um, versus what they necessarily are in, in that moment. Mm -hmm. So the child, you're saying, I'm measuring their worth based upon what they're going to do in the future? Is that what I heard you say? Part of it, like I said, I think there's still, there obviously still is value in the present. There's still, like I said, you get, I get hope from us, you know, small child love, connection and things like that. But as far as like things you were talking about before, as far like looking in the mirror, what kind of car do you drive or like those type of things that really don't matter all that much anyway. A lot of times you're looking at the potential of what they could be. Okay. So I got that. So if you have that, you're like, okay, I, I feel connection, love, whatever it is, that's a benefit right now. But if you look at that other stuff, you're talking about the future. You're not talking about what they've done. You're talking about the future. Yeah. Cause they really haven't, they can't do anything yet. Cause they, and they're barely learning how to walk as far as that goes. Okay. So go to your dark days. Could you mean that for a second? Just kind of think about your dark days. Okay. So the question I have for you is, is you, what are you looking at? Are you, what's you compared to that child? Like if you talk about where the worth comes from. In my dark days, I didn't see a, a lot of, or any worse, if I'm being honest, because I'm looking at, I'm judging myself based off of my experiences, based off my actions, based off of, of, uh, the things that I've done. I can't see that potential that, that may still exist in the moment either, because I'm too focused on in my darkest days on, on the pain of the actions and what I've done, kind of the aftermath of that. Okay. So did you not want to see potential in yourself? I don't know if I didn't want to, I don't think I could because, because there was so much shame and then fear blocking me that I couldn't get through the past or what my current actions were to see anything else. Okay. So you were, you couldn't see in the future or did you predict the future based upon your past or did you not, but did you not, there was no potential there that was positive because you had nothing to go off of? It could be both. I think it's where the fear comes in. So I think the shame for me is I'm never going to do anything good. I'm a bad person. So there is not any potential, but then the fear there is even if I start to think maybe I could do something, there's a fear that I'm going to go back and, and, and end up doing the same things I've always done. So it kind of, both of those counteract my ability to see any, any potential in myself. Thanks for sharing that. I really value that. And I know I can relate, not even from a a long time ago. This is an, ex this is a human experience. Okay. So for that child, we go off potential. And for us, what we're doing is we're going off of, I'm going to go off my track record. All right. But because I'm choosing to stay in this world, in this life, I need to be able to get through it. So I need some kind of hope to go off of. 
I can't look in the mirror and get hope because I don't have anything that's going to predict success. One of the things that's in common with the men that we've been around is, is what they start to do to cope, to navigate, because they can't find hope from themselves or find any positive and potential. So they start to source it from other people. And it's so interesting how we source that. We source that through putting on a mask in what other people want to see. So what they'll do is they'll mirror back to us that hope that we're looking for. But the only way we can get it is to actually put on a mask and say, hey, let me show you what you want to see so you can come bring back to me the hope that I can't find in the mirror. Can you relate to this at all? Yeah, no, it is completely. I think the part that sticks out to me there it is, at least in my, in my mind, it's not even me putting on a mask to be what other people want me to be. It's me putting on a mask trying to be what I think other people want me to be because I don't even bother to ask them what they want because I, I would think in most cases they just want me to be me, but I'm so scared or afraid of rejection that I can't look at myself and I'm like, okay, what, are the, what do I think this person wants? And then I, I do that because I, I can't make that actual connection and take that risk that they'll say something that I don't want to hear or something like that. For me, it's, what do I think that they want? And then I do that. And it's probably not even what they want to begin with. So you're saying like, you're saying if I ask people what they want, they just be like, just be you. I, I, I mean, I, I didn't try it. <laughs> I, my track record isn't doing that because there was so much fear, but my best guess is, yeah, I make sure that I've had in recovery and for most, pretty much everybody I've been involved with wants me to just be me, whatever that means. They don't want you know, fake, they want real, they want vulnerable, they want connection. And I can't do that if I'm putting on a mask and trying to pretend to be something for someone else that doesn't even want me to be that. How busy were you trying to figure out what other people wanted? It's exhausting. I mean, it's a full-time job because I create these roles and these masks for any situation. So at work or with this person, I'm a different person with my partner, I'm a different person with with parents or siblings, I'm a different person. And then keeping track and like splitting myself off from one person into 10 different people is exhausting. Okay. So let's visualize this. And then I want to invite you to tell us more about exhausting at choose recovery services. We do intensives and it's called unmasked, a man's guide to authenticity. Right. And we buy masks off of Amazon and they're white masks, just plain masks. And on the front of the mask, we actually write words like, okay, your job mask. Like, how do you show up at your job? Write things that you want people to see. And people put like outgoing, confident, charismatic. I don't know, just picking random stuff. And then they say, okay, here's a, here's a mask for you being a husband or your partner. Okay, sexy, powerful, honest, whatever it is. And then they put that and they say, okay, here's a mask for whatever. And it's interesting because it gets to be a really rich experience because people are really like, wow, the words aren't all the same for all these environments that I'm in. And then the most powerful part is the, they flip the mask over and on the inside where it's like on the inside where it hits your face, they write what they don't want people to see. So we'll go to the work one, insecure, incompetent leader, whatever it might be. And super powerful. So there's a bunch of masks. So can you expound upon exhausting when you're talking about, I got a lot of masks? I think part of it is trying to keep them separate because I, I have this idea that I have to be a different person for a different groups of people. So I, I have to keep those personas kind of separate. And so that drawing those like clear lines and okay, I'm here now I'm doing this. And then if those lines ever get blurred, like your family life moves into your work life and then you're like trying to navigate being two different people, it's uh it's challenging for me. It's a feeling like I'm always ha having to be on alert. Like I'm always on, I can't ever just turn off and be me. I have to always be on, on display or on for lack of a better word, I guess that did. I'm always having to be projected a certain way. I can't have a bad day. I have to be that person, no matter what, in all circumstances to avoid rejection. Can you talk more about when the worlds collide? I, I think I tried to do a pretty good job of not letting them collide for that reason, because, because it's pretty difficult, but there are times I guess where I use a certain type of language or I talk a certain way at work and then I, you know, go home and you start using, you know, just talking the same way. And it's like, who are, I, I, who are you? It's not, that's not, that's not how you talk. It's not who you normally are. It's oh crap. Like I, I forgot to turn off my work brain and my husband home brain and people get confused. They're like, I, that, that, that doesn't even sound like you. 
because you're never like that. Because it, again, it's an act. It's a mask that I wear in those circumstances. So if I if I blur those lines and I can't show up the way that I've maybe been trained to show up in those situations, then it, it looks completely different and people are confused at, at the very least. So let's go back to why are you wearing the mask? Why is the mask worn? Because of the fear that if anybody actually knew me, they wouldn't want to be with me because of how I feel about myself. Because of my inability to look in the mirror and see myself and accept myself, I don't think anyone else can either. So I have to try to be whatever it is I think they want me to be so that they won't leave me. So there was something you shared with me the other day as we were talking about doing this. I was wondering if you could share it with everybody where you recognize that you were getting people to say that you're enough. Do you remember that part? Yeah, I do. It was a while ago, but I've been in recovery for a while at the time. And I was getting a lot of good forms of validation from people in recovery saying, Hey, I can see the work you're doing. Keep up the good work you're doing this. And, and then I, I said something about, Hey, it's like, all you guys are saying, that's great. It was like the, the one person I want to say that this time with my partner. And then it was pointed out that if she said it to me, I wouldn't believe it either because I didn't believe it myself. And that was eye opening because I'd never thought about it that way. I'd never really considered because I've always been getting my validation from other people. So even, even in recovery, getting people to tell me I'm enough felt like it was enough, but it wasn't because when the phone call ends or the group meeting ends and I'm alone in my thought, I don't believe it. Or I hear someone say, Hey, do, you're doing a great job in the back of my mind. I'm like, if you really knew me, you wouldn't say that. That's literally what I would do. I didn't really see it until it was brought up that, Hey, look, it doesn't matter what anyone else says. And that's why that the beginning of what I said, nothing anyone else says or thinks will change that because I have to get past what other people think about me or what they say about me and, and learn to be okay and be enough by myself before I can even start to connect with other people. And that's where this part of that journey really started for me, I think. Okay, that's cool. There's that part that I wanted to build upon that you were bringing up there. And help me, if I'm getting this wrong, let me know. But you were showing up in environments and people were saying to you, which is what you were wanting, people saying, hey, you are enough. You didn't believe them though. Like you liked that, but it wasn't hitting and it wasn't like, okay, now I believe them now. Um, is that what I heard you say? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you're getting that. It feels good, but it's still not enough. And you're like, only this person. Got it. And then it was like, no, there's never going to be enough. So you told me this other part about uh, that movie that you like. Can you share that part? Yeah, Cool Runnings. It's one of my favorite movies. I watched it probably a million times growing up. I could probably still quote half the movie if you really asked me to, but don't ask me to. But I've been thinking about it a lot in recovery. I think for, at least for me, it, it really relates a lot to this topic. And there's a lot of really good messages in there, but there's a couple of parts to it. One part is it's a Jamaica bobsled team. They're outcasts. Nobody kind of wants them to be there. They're trying to fit in. So they try to mimic and act like all the other bobsled teams from all the other countries, and they're not doing very well. And then there's a line that one of the guys said, they finally have a team meeting. And essentially they say that I'm Jamaican, the best I can be is Jamaican. And that sticks out to me because I, I, I think the best I can be is me. And, and that, so that's a really good method from that. But then they go further along and, and they're getting ready to go to the last race. And the, the main character of asking the, the coach, why he cheated because he cheated after he had a, won a couple of gold medals. So he, the coach is explaining why he cheated, why he had to win at all costs. And then he said, why'd you do it? You had it all. You had everything. And the coach said, if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. And that to me is this whole journey of learning how to be enough is learning to be okay on my own without other people and without needing that external validation. It's still good. It's still healthy to get that from people in recovery, but I, I don't need it. I'm not searching for it. I'm not using it as another form of addiction or validation. I'm actually okay on my own. Then I can start to connect with other people. And I think for me like that, just remembering that movie has been a big deal for me. And it, it's for me, I wrote down to that process for me, like I'm not a bobsled racer or anything like that, obviously, but the only way I can find out and know if I'm enough is when I start to let go of the outcome. And that's where this journey finally started to lead me is that when I finally started to let go of what other people thought of me or what I thought they wanted me to be. Then I, sorry, that I had freedom to just be me. And it was hard. It was really hard. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done, but it was also freeing and peaceful to actually let myself be seen and to see myself. Um, 
I'd never done that before. So yeah, this, this, that's why this topic and this idea is so important to me because I think it's the most important thing I've ever done so far in my life, just being honest, but. It's so interesting the amount of, and I don't know how this will impact you listening, people that are listening here today. I just wanted to get rid of certain behavior. I'm like, if I can just get rid of X and remove it from my life, then I'm going to be okay. Right. But that, that's not true. What I don't know how to do is love myself in my imperfection. What I don't know how to do is like myself. Okay. So silly trick loaded question. You ready for it? Sure. Yeah. What do I need to achieve to be okay with myself? Nothing. What? <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. That's maddening and I hope that's true maddening because I've been working so hard to get love from everybody else and you're telling me that I can have it right now and it matters just where it's coming from which is myself so I want to define a little bit of the what is enough because I don't know if it's driving anybody crazy here but like why are so many of these things so abstract what is enough it's when I understand who I am and when I sit with myself and when I see all of me, when I sit, mm, I feel emotional. By the way, I like emotions, tears. I think they show vulnerability, which is courage and courage is strength. So when you cry, you're strong. That's the way I see it. So when I see all of me, when I look in the mirror and I can look into my eyes and see me, that's the enough part. That person in the mirror, I am seeing them. I'm sitting with them. And I'm seeing all of them. That's the journey, the more awareness. And it's weird because that doesn't bring me comfort even today. Not talking about like I'm some product out there that should be looked at for anything other than I just want to share with you my experience today after a, my journey, there's still discomfort looking in the mirror. But what there is, is there's also compassion and love that comes with that too. Okay. So here's another one. You shared a quote with me that you heard from like a group or something. And I wanted to bring that into this being present and, and seeing all of me looking in the mirror. Can you share that with me again? What you heard in group? Yeah. So basically what I heard was it was just the end of the quote. The idea was just being stuck in the eternity of yesterday and tomorrow. And for me, so if I'm being stuck in yesterday, that, that's shame. So I'm stuck in fear, in regret or shame of the things that I've done or fear of the future. So that's tomorrow. And. Those are both things that I, I can't go back to yesterday. I can't go forward into tomorrow, but those two ideas can keep me from being able to be present in where I'm at today. And the only way that I know of that I can be enough is if I'm present in that moment. If I'm in fear or shame, I can't be enough because I'm worried about what might go wrong in the future or what I've already done wrong in the past. And I can't let go of those things and be in, in the moment and, and actually love who I am right now, like looking in the mirror, for instance. Okay. So I agree with that, but I'm going to challenge it, even though I agree with it, just to hear your thought process on it. Okay. So you're saying it's not helpful if I'm living in yesterday and shame, or if I'm living in tomorrow, which is fear being present with myself. So isn't that just this, isn't that just letting myself off the hook? If I just stay in the present and I don't recognize like maybe the pain that I've caused myself or specifically others, isn't that letting myself off the hook? Not the way I look at it. The way I look at it is it's not about letting myself off the hook. It's about separating who I am from what I've done or what I might do. So it's letting go of that shame and not wearing it, not making it who I am. It can be a part of me. Like the behaviors can be something that I've done, but it doesn't have to define who I am. And once I can separate myself from what I've done, I can actually start to look at the things that I've done and process and do that work. Because if I am the things that I've done, that I'm, that I can't go anywhere with that. Okay. So you're saying it's not a place where I just give up and say it is what it is. It's a place where I basically become mobilized and see myself. And then I take on new energy compared to being that stuck in my, in myself and not being able to engage in life in general. Is that what I hear you saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I so appreciate you coming here today. I asked you to share what you wanted your message to be today. Do you mind just kind of wrapping us out with what that is and whatever version you want to share? Yeah, yeah. Basically what I wanted to say and what, what I think is still relevant to me and will be for this entire journey is that you matter, you have value, nothing you've done or will do 
and anything anyone else thinks of you changes that. You are enough. Cool. That's really cool. Well, I appreciate you being here. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else you want to comment on before we go? No, just to thank you for having me. Thanks for asking me. I'm glad that I agreed on your 50-50 chance. I think this was helpful for me. So, yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Good to hang out with y'all. Have a good one. Hey, thanks for joining us today. If this is something that you connected with, I'd love to meet with you more and talk about it. So what you can do is go to choosecoveryservices.com or check the show notes. And there what we can do is set up a quick conversation to meet. Thanks so much for listening to Beyond the Facade, where we unmask the authentic self.